What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for another VOD review, and today I got a really spicy one for you guys. This was a game off of PBE, and we already have a stage one encounter. This is the L Lilia encounter, which makes it so your augment rounds are randomized. So instead of getting them at the standard timings, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, you're getting augments at completely random intervals. They could legit be 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, and you could just have your three augments at the start of the game. They could take until forever to actually show up. It is pretty crazy. Um, the other thing that is pretty crazy is I put out a guide to what I am playing in this game onto Tactor. It would help me a lot if you guys go check it out. Uh, and if you guys just want to know, this is for Story Weavers. If you're ever curious, like, oh, what are the Story Weaver items do again? I forgot what they do. You can just pull up the guide and boom, you can see all the Story Weaver items. I got some comps in here for you guys. Go check it out. And as always, if you drop a like, it helps me infinite, infinite, infinite. Um, so yeah, let's watch the game. I've also heard your criticism. And I have slowed down the video a bit. I'm, I am i don't want to put it like way down into like, I don't know, like just 1x. I, there's no way I'm doing 1x speed. 1x speed, what do you think this is? But I have brought it down to a chill 1.5x speed so I can talk through all the units, all the traits. You guys can see stuff a little bit more clearly. Uh, as I said, it is a Story Weaver game. And uh, I'm saying that because I have a pretty good Story Weaver opener. I already have Sivir Pair. I already have this Riven, uh, this Diana unit. She's a Dragonlord Sage. Those... Tend to not be that good early game, though Sage does interact with Zyra, who's a Story Weaver unit, so I'm not really caring about holding her that much. I prefer to hold on to this Atrox and this Garen here. And I end up hitting uh, Yasuo to a 2-1, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, I get the Kale in here. At this point, I'm not really thinking about actually playing around Vertical Story Weaver. So I offer Talisman of Aid here, I think, uh, just because I don't really... I have Cloak, I have Bow, but I was thinking maybe I could slam Renan's here, and then like I won't have to worry about the fact that I kill my Shred components. In hindsight... With the fact that I end up actually playing on Story Weaver this game, uh, I probably shouldn't have gone for this because you can just make Shred very easily. And I end up even going Gwinsu's, which like, I mean, that just allows me to just make Evan Trout as my next item. So a, a little bit troll, as I've said before, you know, when, when it's your first time playing the set, uh, everything, uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe you don't play perfect, but it's 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 not the end of the world. Uh, and yeah, I already have a pretty good opener here. I mean, get a Sivir 2 in my shop here, as well as a Garen pair. Uh, now that I have a Sivir 2, I'm feeling comfortable uh, with leveling in this position um, because I think I can actually play for win streak here with a Gwinsu Sivir. Uh, the only other awkward thing uh, with the fact that I do end up kind of playing vertical Story Weaver this game is I do need to find a replacement Sivir. Um, so it's it's kind of very difficult to... Uh, it, it hurts, it hurts, right? Because I have my items on the Sivir, but it's not like I can put them on anyone else. Like She's the best item holder here for sure. Uh, it just definitely like feels bad that I don't have someone better to item hold. I'd love like a random like trick shot unit, um, but you know, like am I gonna find a bard? Probably not. Um, that I guess that would be the ideal uh, case scenario. Is I could just throw a Squinsu onto a bard, and then I'd be like hard, hard chilling here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, at this point, I have a solid Story Weaver opener. I see all these Ink Shadow units, and I'm I'm certainly thinking of maybe playing around Ink Shadow this game. I have the Sem in my shop. I have the Jax in my shop. Ink Shadow is very, very, very strong, and if you want to guide onto Ink Shadow units, and you can see all the Ink Shadow items, I also have a Tactor guide down below for that. I'm I'm beast in it basically. I, I've I got all the guides out for you guys in, in case you're interested, in case you ever want to know what the items are. You can always just refer to that. Um, but yeah, we're actually speaking of bards. We're finding a bard here. Bard with IE. I don't. I mean, I guess is. I don't know how that actually works with bard because it's it's just an auto attack modifier. So I assume it doesn't really care about IE. Um, other than just making his autos crit, which, yeah, doesn't seem very good. Uh, three cost carousel here with the Voli Bear encounter, which is, I don't know, it's, it's kind of cool. The fact that you always get three gold, no matter what. Uh, I opt to just take my even shroud component here, which I, cause like my idea is that I'm not going to play around this kale later, but like, ugh, like honestly, um, I, I probably like, even if you play around Kaisa later, you can, you can keep the kale on your board. So this even shroud is going to end up being a mistake. I would say it's not the end of the world. And Hey, we get in um this uh this shen here for ghostly which is cool um ghostly is a really interesting synergy um yeah there I, I hover over it for like literally half a second that's probably all you need here let me go back and, and pause for you guys so upon dealing you're taking damage seven times they send out these little ghosts that give themselves max hp and then the haunted units take damage um they take bonus damage and then they pass the specters on so it's kind of a weird take on um 
uh, what was it? Shadow Isles? Shadow Isles was the trait where, like, you know, every time they would deal damage or take damage, they would stack it up and then they'd get a shield. But instead, they send out these little ghosties. You can see those four ghosties on... Yeah, you can see these those tiny little things that are orbiting the units. Those are the little ghosts that are making them take extra damage. And then those go to the next units as they die. So pretty cool. 2-6 here, we get our first augment, which is pretty interesting. This would have been our 2 on augment, but it turns out to be 2-6 because of Nico. I don't really love any of these options. Built Diff would be interesting if we could have got it earlier, but it's a bit too late for Built Diff. Uh, and I do end up getting a Story Weaver Crest here, and I say, okay, I mean, surely I have to take Story Weaver Crest, right? I mean, this allows me to play 5 Story Weaver immediately. I just need to get Zyra in. Uh, I am like confused for a second about what units I need to play, but I do this for the story we run on Atrox, uh, and I pick up the scroll of haste, which gives Kale stacking attack speed. If you want to know what the other one is, then check out my tactic guide. No, uh, if you, uh, the, the other one makes it so her, uh, her spell does a bigger AOE, I believe. I really feel like the attack speed one should be the strongest, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, also we fight this guy who has uh, like five ink shadow in, I guess. I, I mean, and there's no way ink shadow was so, 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 so strong. Um, so we lose to that sadly. I was, I wanted my four streak there, man. I was, I was this close to having my four streak and then I just got denied by this guy. It was very, very annoying, but, uh, it's okay. It's, it's all right. At the end of the day, we have a, a five star weaver Kale. I can't be mad about that. We can just level and add more frontline for her or maybe more backline, depending on what we end up actually hitting. Uh, I just want econ here and the sword can build towards my AD items. Uh, and this is Riven 2, which is fantastic as well. So yeah, I got Riven 2 here. Still holding on to gear and pair. And I have the extra Sivir so that I can move items off Sivir later. Uh, we get our next Augment at 3-1, so it's wild. The 2-6 uh, the Augment into the 3-1 Augment. I think uh, Blistering Strikes is pretty good here just to guarantee that heal cut because I'm actually nowhere near having heal cut. Uh, neither of these components build into heal cut, so might as well go for it. Um, I don't know if my voice sounds any different, by the way. I think I'm getting sick. I talked about it on stream a little bit yesterday. Hopefully I don't end up uh, like getting full-blown sick. But yeah, I, I'm, I, I have a little bit of a, a something, a, a frog in my throat. I think I sound about normal, maybe a little deeper than normal. But yeah, I'll try to, I don't know, get better. I, I'm chugging that NyQuil, DayQuil combination quill. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, this Kale actually does a lot of work. One thing that I noticed playing this after playing the playtest is it felt like Kale was actually pretty solid. Uh, on the playtest, it felt like this Kale unit was just like completely worthless. Uh, but yeah, like after after the playtest, playing this on live, like Kel actually feels like she can be a real carry, which is which is really nice. Uh, I'm thinking about actually the difference between Jax and Gnar here, and I decided to play Jax actually because Gnar is more of like a carry ward, and he's a, he's a weird guy. Whereas Gnar here is just, uh, or whereas Jax on the other hand, like actually is going to tank and do some stuff. We also fight this Giga Vertical Umbral board. Is this Becca? No, this is Stridebreaker actually, because I know uh, was Becca in this game. Yeah, Becca was in this game. For my uh for my chat and she like was trying to giga hard force yone because she did that last pve but uh but this is actually stridebaker playing this like vertical umbral stuff that was that's that's not quite six umbral that's four umbral that gives you extra hexes um yeah we get six artifacts here i run over them all in like a, a weird way before they actually appear because i don't know i'm a beast and i actually feel a little bit bad about sending the sword onto sivir here i wasn't thinking about the fact that i was gonna get these artifact anvils which sort of forces me to put a weird item on somebody uh these items end up being pretty good diamond hands over here and then uh another infinity force onto ribbon but then i'm stuck with one sniper's focus that i'm not too happy about so i just gold collector sivir sniper's focus the zyra it, it feels bad i wish i could just gold collector sivir sniper's focus sivir i guess that's something to keep in mind if you have a stage three encounter that can you probably shouldn't slam your items on units because that can like radically change what items you put on them and you can get this one you can get the one that gives you a bunch of radiant items uh and then all of a sudden it becomes really annoying uh to play around uh once you've slammed this one component on the unit so something to keep in mind for sure of carousel here there is a galio uh which would be my sixth story weaver but that gets taken uh, pretty much immediately uh, i forgot what i'm looking for at this point i'm pretty sure i'm looking for kaisa items here um i'm not sure exactly what i'm thinking about guard breaker oh yeah i was thinking maybe guard breaker was i really thinking guard breaker gunblade i mean this is definitely guard breaker which is a solid item for sure um yeah i think maybe i was thinking guard breaker gunblade which seems quite weird but i mean i don't know oh i was Perhaps thinking about playing around Irelia here, actually. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the idea. And I wanted to go, like, Guardbreaker Gunblade for Irelia. Uh, the problem is we're pretty far off of Irelia, so it's kind of hard to actually get there from here. We need to go 8 and then actually hit her on 8 or go 9, hit her on 9. So, yeah, a little 
a little difficult, but hey, if we can hit seven star weaver, maybe, maybe, maybe we can just make it to nine, make it to ten, and, like have a strong board. It's PB as well. Uh, we also fight this guy with a bard. There's another uh, bard carry here, uh, which seems a little underwhelming, honestly. It looks like he, he was not doing that much work, but I mean, you, you just put the Gwinsus on him and let him rip, right? Uh, actually, maybe that was the same same bard carry, now that I think about it, because it had an IE on it, right? I think I'm an extra ribbon here. Not really going to do anything. At this point, yeah, we're, we're trying to find that Galio. Probably going to go a fast 8 because of how healthy and wealthy we are. Also, that Caitlyn. I get really scared for a second because I, I think Caitlyn's a 4 cost, but she's not. Uh, and we also get Ink Shadow in here, which is really, really nice. Um, just level for the quick Ink Shadow. This is a tanky Ink Shadow buff that gives them uh, extra HP. And then every time they auto, they get extra HP here. Let me let me go back and pause it for you guys so that you guys know. So, yeah. Tax heal the holder for 2.5% of their max HP and deal the same amount as bonus magic damage. So you want a tank with a lot of attack speed, which is going to end up being Udyr. Uh, that is the idea, at least, because Udyr does all of that. Um, but obviously, we do not have an Udyr yet, so we are just stuck chilling on this, which, I mean, is decent enough. It makes our tank tankier. We still get to make 30 gold here. We're pretty wealthy. And yeah, we can, we can just probably, like, pour to it. I see, like, Yone and Cha. I don't know why I'm hovering that Yone. I think because he was exalted, but, like, we're, we've gone a bit too... We're past Exalted at this point, for sure. Yeah, we, we just want the Galio. We want the Galio on 8, and uh, find the Kai'Sa, play like an Ink Shadow plus Story Weaver board, and we'll be very happy with that. That is the hope, the dream of this board, I would say. Uh, also, I definitely could have made gold here. I don't know why I didn't make 50. Uh, I think I was just kind of... Yeah, I was, I was lost in the sauce. Uh, speaking of sauce, I see this Ash here, and I say, okay, I could maybe play around this Ash uh, as a carry. Like, she might already be better than the Sivir, um, just because Sivir is not the, the best carry in the world. Uh, IE also seems like a very, very straightforward if I'm going to play uh, towards... I mean, at this point, it's looking more like Kai'Sa with the IE. So I don't know. I don't think I end up slamming the IE like this round or maybe not even next. Maybe next round I slam it. Um, but if I end up playing towards Kai'Sa, which is the ideal at this position, um, then then the IE is actually going to do a ton of work because Kai'Sa is like a, a caster. Uh, damage dealer type units. Uh, I also get this interesting ghostly shop, but I don't really have Morgana items. I guess I could go like IE Garbreaker Canyon. Uh, I don't know. May maybe. I mean, that that is definitely something. Uh, it's just a little bit awkward. But yeah, like I, I have the Ash that I could put in. I get ghostly in here. I sell the Ash actually. Oh, okay. So I don't play around Ash this game. Um, I thought I did, but I think I just play this board and I do the classic. I'm going to go eight here and just sit for a couple of rounds because I'm not actually rich enough to roll here on eight um but what i can do is go eight make my board a little bit better getting in this morgana here and then just sit for a couple of rounds and then go nine and if i if i win some of these rounds then i can actually just go fast nine um but i, I think this is actually a really really nice pretty common way to manage your econ where you just go eight on four two hold this 20 and then wait a few rounds then roll um this kindred uh this kindred encounter by the way was bugged yesterday on pve to show up like pretty much every single game just every game you get either redemption or a uh a GS and it's it is those two items every single time it's, it's not like sometimes it's two other items it's redemption or GS every single time which I believe is just what the account is supposed to do but we were getting it like legit every single game which was uh pretty uh pretty incredible uh we fight this board here which is this crazy dryad board here with the gnar plus the kindred uh kindred was really 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 strong uh yesterday I don't know if they actually nerfed her on the patch that uh that came out earlier today but yeah I was People were getting destroyed by Kindreds. Luckily, we can get through this board. But I mean, look at that two-star two-cost dealing. It was like 4.5k damage out of that Kindred. That is that is not bad whatsoever. Um, after winning these two fights, I'm thinking maybe. I mean, I'm 82 HP. Maybe I can actually just push nine. I'm trying to remember what actually like how I played out this game. Uh, and I still have all these components. I'm thinking of just finishing out the. I mean, at this moment, I'm thinking of finishing out like a like a belt item here. And I uh, my pickup chain here. This is gonna be okay. I don't even know what I ended up building here. TG really. I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we shall see. Uh, Zoe 2 is a solid Story Weaver unit to pick up. And I do get the Kaisa finally, who is a really, really nice Ink Shadow unit to play on my board. So I can start actually item holding her. Yeah. So this is a game where I actually do get to Kaisa, which is uh, very fortunate. Because, yeah, I can do this. I can get this in, who's a random uh, Arcanist. Uh, it's not bad. And, yeah, I just slam these two items here. Uh, and do I slam? I think I'm waiting to see... Um, Oh yeah, what uh, what my next item is, like if I end up getting more uh, more Ink Shadows in. Uh, because I could just slam like an IE here potentially, but I think I'm looking at my... I'm like saying like, oh, maybe I get five Ink Shadow in here. It's probably not going to happen though. I, I probably could have slammed here. I do also end up getting a Galio here, which allows me to play 
the seven story weaver here. I just get this in, get this in. Also, okay, so look at these. Look at these. I mean, I don't actually care about the left one that much, but here, I'll show it again for fun. Um, deal 10% more damage, attacks now hit a one hex radius around the target, which seems insane with the extra attack speed. But this one, Tome of Mending, I feel like goes crazy. Every eight seconds, revive the strongest ally that hasn't been revived yet at 1500 HP. That revives them with items, by the way. Like, I, I'm pretty sure this Tome of Mending is insane. I mean, you're, you're basically just getting like an entire augment out of this, I would say. Like, reviving a unit every eight seconds. It's not, I mean, eight seconds is a long time for sure um it's it's not like you're reviving units every few seconds but i mean look at this i just revive a full garen here then we're gonna try to get to the next eight seconds to revive another unit i get there revive this whole ribbon like i win the fight because i revive two entire units like it's insane and now i'm on a five streak i can try to just push nine from this spot uh it is it is i don't know this this kale upgrade seems so sick especially when you're like not really carrying the kale like i'm using her for shred even though i'm not even really using her for shred because i don't need shred because i built the stupid even trout um, but like if she's like kind of like a supportive kale like this kale is, then you can just do this. Um, and and yeah, I mean you're like if you can get to like a Galio two with items, revive like a Galio two, then you are cruising. Um, at this point, I'm so rich that I'm just gonna go nine. You could roll a little bit here on eight to try to pick up Kaisa, but I'm just thinking I'm gonna go nine here and I go the Gumblade. Yeah, I, I want to greed for this Gumblade really hard, which like in hindsight, I don't know why I wanted the Gumblade so badly. I, I feel like it's probably better to just go damage on her. I mean, obviously Gumblade's gonna buy us some time. I think. Okay, thinking where I was back now, getting getting into that mental space, I think the reason I wanted Gumblade is because I was thinking, I was still thinking I was gonna be end up, uh, I would end up playing Aurelia later, and I feel like Gumblade's really solid on Aurelia because she does really consistent damage. Um, not the best item right now on Kaisa. I mean, it's fine. Kaisa does solid consistent damage, but it's just not amazing, amazing. Um, but it's fine. Like we're gonna we're gonna level here. By the way, uh, look up at the. Uh, the turn indicator at the top there, you can see we have an augment coming up at 5-6. We are going to get our third augment at 5-6. I, I just, I mean, that, that's what this, uh, that's what this portal does for sure is, I mean, messes around with those. But yeah, getting, we got two augments, one at 2-6, one at 3-1. So two augments in two rounds. And then we had to wait two, no, three entire stages basically to get our third augment. It is very, very weird, but it's a pretty fun one to play in. Uh, just because you don't, it, it really mixes stuff up and, and changes how you play the game. We played uh, a game, I think it was in this galaxy again. Um, I, maybe I'll maybe I'll tuber it. We'll see. That uh, led to some really really interesting augment pickups um, because it just sort of like changes what you can do, what you should do. Um, so pretty uh, pretty wild. But yeah, I mean this is just my board. Uh, I didn't really talk much about it, but Kaisa fits really well on this board because you're already twick shot, twick, trick shot. Um with the uh with the sivir so she just fits well into the board and then you can also even end up fitting ink shadow if you uh if you play around this uh atrox which is who i have on the board as well so like i could theoretically level here get in a third ink shadow uh and then you know like have three in but like at that point it's kind of late but you know it works to some degree um there's also this guy yeah, who should who i should have played there the four bruiser i was uh talking about that i was i was in my head i was like i i should play this i should play this yo that's a sage spat by the way i didn't even really see it but i probably yeah, I didn't get the option to pick it up, but I, I definitely would have picked it up if I could have. Uh, I don't really get anything great here. I don't know. I could try to figure out some kind of way to fit, like, Duelist in, uh, but I, I just go for the Adaptive Helm here. Um, it'll be a solid tank item on anyone, so might as well. Uh, and yeah, I can get, uh, I can slap that there. I can put this in. Now I have for Bruiser, uh, which is a solid frontline. I'm like, yeah, I could cut these two units, but, like, honestly, for Bruiser for now is not bad at all, so I might as well just play this. Uh, and I'm still streaking, so I might as well just go fast 10, because I'm I'm winning all the fights. I'm 64 HP, like, no need, no need to not go fast 10, right? Like, oh, why, sh why shouldn't I have it? Uh, I can even, like, sell this Diana if I win this fight, though. This guy I'm fighting is pretty strong. Um, does Kale revive something important here? Uh, yes, she does. Look at that revive, by the way. It revives the Riven with items. Like, isn't that... Ugh, it's, it's so sick, man. Like, if you can revive a tank with three items, it's insane. Um... Oh, here we get another encounter, by the way. York reduces the boss to reroll your shot by one. So, I mean, yeah, I guess that. And then we go into augment here. Prismatic final augment here. I already have items on everybody. So I'm looking at bulk. I don't really want uh, this baboom augment either because I don't think it's going to do that much. Binary would be cool, but I have items on everyone. Golden egg at 5-7, by the way. Nice one, right, games? I'm going to take this golden egg and like the game's going to be over before I hatch it. Uh, so I just opt to take bulk here. Um, which, you know, is going to make my entire team a lot tankier. Uh, we'll 
be really, really nice for when my Kale revives these units, because I believe they're still going to keep the bonus HP, though it does revive them at 1500 HP, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but hey, like, you know, they're it incentivizes me to put items on my units, and they're going to get revived with items, and it's going to be really, really cool. Um, but uh, but yeah, we end up fighting this pretty scary Dryad reroll board out of uh, Becca from my chat. Uh, this this Nar three and this uh, this Kindred three. Luckily, we have enough frontline that I mean, this Riven actually just tanks for so long um, that uh, that everyone stays alive. So that's pretty cool. We pick up Quay pair here, and I think about it for a sec. I'm like, is there a way? I mean, he's he's a Mythic unit. Like, could I fit Mythic in or like anything? But like after thinking about it more, like I, I don't know. I, I don't think there is a way to fit Way in here. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, he's just, I'm going to end up uh, selling him, and uh, and that's that's completely fine. Um, but yeah, we uh, we end up picking up Galio 2 here, which is huge. Now we just want more Galio items. We're probably going to level next round, uh, and then just try to upgrade our board. Um, Ramble Vest, fantastic item onto Galio here. Uh, I scatter on the lobby. I see a decent amount of AD, so I'm like, yeah, Bramble seems good here. Uh, and I already have the Redemption right next to him, so who needs uh, another one? Uh, and yeah, we can just level next round, get in some five costs. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure. I don't actually know what I end up adding here. Oh, there is an idea of adding. Um, you can add like Rakan uh, to, to get Ultrist in. And there's like maybe a way to add Dragon Dragon Strike or whatever it's called with um, like Diana. Add like Diana plus Rakan maybe would be one uh, thing. I don't know what I end up actually adding here on nine or on 10. Uh, I'll be real. I mean, five costs are always good. This is a Sage that I can play on the board. Think about this uh, Azir for a second, but I don't really see how I'm fitting him. We pick up the Aurelia, pick up the Zyrakhan. Um, yeah, we can get the Rakan in over there. Uh, and then might as well. I was actually thought about this for a second, and then I was like, is Aurelia 1 even better? Aurelia 1 with zero items, is that even better than this Zoe? Like, I kind of feel like it's probably not. Like, Zoe 2 should do more damage. I mean, 2 star 3 cost should be better than a 1 star 5 cost, unless the 5 cost provides a really, really good utility. So, yeah, I have to just not make the swap. Also, just look at my board. Like, my Kale is just reviving units. Like, nobody is dying here. At this point, I just need to roll and find my upgrades because I'm just, like, trying to figure out what my board is even supposed to be. I can cut this guy, not really care about Ink Shadow, get some different stuff in. Um, pick up the Udir, who is another Ink Shadow unit. So I'm like, okay, I could... I, I don't know how much I think about it. I mean, the Ink Shadow buff is pretty good, so I should probably end up just getting the Udir in um, over, like, one of these bruisers but i mean i can't really get it in over bruiser because the three bruisers i must play but it'd probably be good over just the wukong here sage is i mean sage is really really nice giving my entire team ap and uh omnivamp but i mean three ink shadow give that tank ink shadow over to the udir uh it seems really good so maybe maybe i don't know if i end up even doing that i'm i was as dizzy this game as i was like uh, i am re-watching it i'm i'm as dizzy as i was playing it uh i just have to take crown no i, I take yeah recon pair here just because uh, Zyrakhan 2 can't be bad. Um, oh, now that I think about it, do I even bulk this uh, component? Because after thinking back on it, I feel like maybe I didn't. Um, but it's chill. We're going to roll down here. Try to pick up some 2-star 5 costs. I don't know. I see. I end up getting the set in here. Um, who is uh, a Warden onto my board, which is, I don't know, cool, I guess. Uh, he's he's just a decent frontliner. Uh, but, I mean, that's, that's about it. Uh, I mean, he, he tries to do damage, but... With zero items, he's not going to do that much damage, but he's, you know, a good a good frontliner. I can't uh, say that he's that bad. And that also allows me to get out of the, um, the that bruiser frontliner that I had that I can't remember his name. He's an Ink Shadow bruiser frontliner. Is he an Aatrox? I don't know. I'm still learning the set. Uh, yeah, I think it was Aatrox. Allowed me to get out of him, which, I mean, it'd be nice to play Ink Shadow, but, um, and honestly, Ink Shadow, now that I think about it, would, re would be really good because uh, it would give me an, another item, right? That... That must count as an item for uh, cybernetic bulk. Oh, I'm thinking of stuff. Uh, I mean, that's why TFT is so cool. I'm thinking of stuff after I got out of the game. Uh, but I think, yeah, and I didn't end up uh, bulking this belt. I definitely should have. But yeah, I mean, my board still ends up being good enough. Kais is just such a beast. Uh, and the uh, the Kale is such a beast as well that I do end up uh, winning this game. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Once again, check out my Tactor link down below with all my guides. Uh, on it and I will see you guys I want to give you guys the post match so you can see in case you care uh, in the next video bye